Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art. Um, I'm going to read you a little bit more from our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution by Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman. Um, we're on page 155 at the subtitle of What is Wrong with Nuclear Power? As if we haven't already figured that one out. I'm going to take my glasses off. The normal day-to-day -day operations of a nuclear power plant are regulated by the standards tabulated in Title 10, Part 20 of the Code of Federal Regulations. These are the, the, these are the reactor regulations that are promulgated by the AEC and represent the basis for the licenses issued to the nuclear power plants. As we indicated in the earlier chapters of this book, the primary standard which sets the allowable level for radiation exposure of the population at large is much too high. We estimate that if the population of the United States were exposed to this guideline, there would be an additional 32,000 cancer deaths each year. And guess what? There probably have been. In addition to that, we estimate that the genetic consequences of this could be far greater, leading to an increase of between 150,000 to 1,500,000 additional deaths each year. In addition to these genetic deaths, there could be a 5 to 50% increase in such debilitating diseases as diabetes, schizophrenia, and rheumatoid arthritis. Welcome to 2015, folks. So far as the secondary standards are concerned, that is the maximum permissible concentrations in the air and water, we demonstrated in this chapter that these standards are essentially meaningless. Therefore, one can state at the onset, one of the things that is wrong with the nuclear power reactors is that the regulations which govern the normal day-to-day -day operations represent unacceptable guidelines. Guidelines which would cause the public to which would cause the public to pay too high a price for the benefit of nuclear generated power. It may be that the nuclear power industry can meet the far more restrictive standards than those promulgated by the AEC. However, the reluctance of the AEC and the JCAE to change these standards causes us to have serious doubts as to whether or not the nuclear power industry will be able to meet the more restrictive standards, which actually represent acceptable standards for the exposure of the, to the population. New subtitle, How Radioactivity Leaks Through Pool Rod Pin Holes. Holy crap, really? Dang. To a considerable extent, the amount of radioactivity released to the environment by an operating nuclear power reactor depends upon the integrity of the fuel rods in the, integri in the, in the reactor. The large reactors that are planned to be constructed and are being constructed in this country today have thousands of these fuel rods, which are inserted into the core of the reactor. As these fuel rods age, they develop small pinholes. The rea radioactivity which is generated within the fuel rods then leaks through these pinholes and into the water, which is moderating the reactor. Hmm. The reactor is not able to completely contain this water, which bathes and moderates the fuel elements and contains the radioactivity which is leaked from the rods. Therefore, the radioactivity contaminated water accumulates within the reactor housing. This radioactive wastewater that had accumulated within the reactor is then metered out into the cooling water that is being returned to the river or to the ocean. Consequently, the degree below the maximum permissible concentrations that a given reactor will be able to operate depends upon the integrity of its fuel rods, as well as the integrity of all the valves and nozzles and pipes that comprise the plumbing and cycling system of the reactor. The reactors presently under construction are planned to operate for some 20 years. In addition to that, the plans are to change the fuel rods only once every two or three years. Moreover, these reactors are considered 
larger than, I am sorry, Moreover, these reactors are considerably larger than the reactors with which we have any experience to date. Oh, God dang it. The combination of these factors indicate that we do not really know how reactors will operate when they begin to age and as their fuel rods begin to age. Has anybody out there talked about the fuel rods? I have not heard this at all. And the NRC just extends licensing after licensing without, I mean, wow. It may well be that the natural aging process of the reactor will cause it to creep up to the maximal permissible concentrations that are presently allowed by the AEC. They might even exceed those particular levels. So maybe they just fucking used Fukushima as a, as a way to raise up the radiation levels because they knew they were fucking killing us already, the fucking rat bastards. Oof. Since nuclear power reactors are being proposed at a rate which indicates they will be supplying a very substantial fraction of our future electrical power needs, we will be presented with a fait accompli in the future. That's where we're at, folks. If these reactors do not operate at their design specifications, which they haven't, it will be difficult to shut them down because we will need the power. And if we shut them down, sizable sections of our country would experience periods of brownout. Well, so what? We might therefore be forced to live without whatever radioactive emissions the reactors required. I'm sorry, I'm going to read that again, to live with. We might therefore be forced to live with whatever radioactive emissions these reactors required. Once we have made a very sizable commitment to nuclear generated power, we must face the fact that we would be stuck with that commitment. Welcome to 2015. I guess that's the theme of today's post, isn't it? Man, this is where I start cussing you guys. Okay, new subtitle. Safe disposal of old fuel rods, a tremendous problem. Hmm, I think we still have that fucking problem. Wow. There is yet another reason why the AEC is reluctant to make the guidelines for nuclear power reactors more restrictive, and this is the operation of the fuel reprocessing plant. When the fuel rods in a nuclear reactor have been placed for some two or three have been in place for some two or three years, they will be removed from the reactor and taken to a fuel reprocessing plant. By fuel reprocessing, it is simply meant that the fuel rods are broken down and the remaining fissionable material is salvaged for the manufacture of additional rods, or probably nuclear weapons. In this process, a reclaiming of unspent fissionable material in the rods the material is subjected to acid digestion. I'm going to read that again because that's a science thing. I'm beginning to get lost. In this process of reclaiming the unspent fissionable material in the rods, the material is subjected to acid digestion. As a result, large quantities of liquid waste are generated and this contains relatively large amount of radioactive fission products that were generated during the operation of the nuclear reactor. These large volumes of liquid waste, therefore, represent a substantial waste disposal problem. What do we have now, 300,000 tons or something pathetic like that? In one commercially operable fuel reprocessing plant in the United States, the nuclear fuel services plant in West Valley, New York, is an example of this kind of operation. Although not operating at its full capacity, it is discharging large amounts of radioactivity into the Catarugas Creek. As a consequence, downstream from the plant, we calculate at the present time that if an individual consumed one pound of fish a week from this creek, he would be exceeding the present radiation exposure guidelines. With the proposed expansion of nuclear reactors, there will have also be commensurate expansion in fuel reprocessing facilities. Consequently, the number of waterways which will be contaminated to a level commensurate 
with that associated with the nuclear fuel services plant could be numerous. In other words, although the nuclear power reactors themselves may release only small quantities of radioactivity into the environment, this will be more than compensated for by the operation of fuel reprocessing plants. As a result, the present guidelines promulgated by the AEC may just be barely adequate and maybe not even that. We will discuss this tremendous radioactive waste disposal problem in more detail in the next chapter. Can't wait. The reluctance of the Atomic Energy Commission and the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy and the nuclear power industry to have more restrictive radiation protective guidelines strongly suggests that the present generation of nuclear power reactors will not be able to operate safely even in their normal day-to-day -day operations. This alone is sufficient to cause us to have serious apprehensions concerning the nuclear power industry. You know what I say to that? Why did John Kaufman allow to have his stuff taken out of his presentation? That is bullshit. I'm still fuming over that one. You know what? I'm on page 158, and I am going to stop here. Uh, the, we're at insurance firms reluctant to assume nuclear risks. <laughs> I can't wait to read that. Um, I'm feeling a lot better than I was the other day, but it's gotten late. I wished I had gotten here earlier. It's 1230 at night, and I started work at 930, so I think I need to go to bed and rest my body. And I, you know what? The pee therapy worked. <laughs> I'm kind of back to myself. So anyways, I will talk to you guys soon. And um, I just want to thank everybody who is supporting the Post Ignorance Project and becoming a member in spirit, if anything else. You know, once you find out about Fukushima and you find out about the nuclear project, the, the whole nuclear lies, you're basically post ignorant. Once you find out about the lies of these people, what they're doing to our planet, you are post-ignorant. And it's up to you to admit your ignorance and do your own homework. And admit when you don't know. And you don't have to be ashamed of what we don't know. That's what they've completely worked on on our planet, is to make us all feel ignorant. And we just don't have enough information to make a decision. And it's just not enough. Well, you know what? We can find out. We don't need that much information. Let's just be very clear. I don't need to be a scientist to look at mutated third and fourth generation babies from nuclear disasters. The only other thing that competes with it is fucking Monsanto's, what's that called, Roundup. Which is just as bad, and I wouldn't doubt if it's not made of the same bullshit. I'll tell you the truth. Because, you know, Roundup, I think, is a secret. All these secrets, just like the fracking secret. We know what their secret is. They're using fucking nuclear technology. It's bullshit. So I'm going to end here, but you know what? I'm not ending here. I always say that. <laughs> I did want to tell everybody that April 10th is Kevin's birthday. He's going to be 55. And um, I don't know if he's going to be on the road. I sort of, I don't know where, how he, you know, I just kind of go with the flow with him. He sets his own agenda, and uh, I just support him. So he's making his way up the coast to San Francisco. But, I don't know, his birthday's a couple weeks away, and I would really hope that our supporters in the Post Ignorance Project let him know how much we appreciate him I mean, while in the middle of fighting cancer, he's decided to take up the mantle to wake people up. People like me and people like a lot of people who support us. So I really want to thank everyone, but maybe people can like think of a way to help to thank Kevin. I don't know. But there's a lot of things you can do. We always say contribute. That helps him support his lifestyle of going out and being an activist. That's that's our goal in the Post Ignorance Project is that we will get enough contributions that Kevin can be a constant activist. And hopefully I can be a constant activist and leave this behind. Um, we're going to need bodies on the ground and people out there doing it. And we need people who are articulate, who are willing to study and understand the information. And so I encourage anyone who wants to join us to start speaking out. You know, this is not about the limelight or the show or any of that. The only reason that Kevin's out there by himself is because nobody goes with him. 
Nobody shows up. I mean, I was at Salem. Five people showed up in Salem on 311. Less than 15 people showed up in Portland. That's ridiculous, United States of America. Stop fucking sticking your head in the sand. You know, it's it's getting serious. This shit is getting serious. The fucking... What did we see yesterday? They call them die-offs. That is annoying. It's not die-offs. Anyways, I'll stop ranting. I hope you guys will be able to catch our show on UCY.TV, the Post Ignorance Project show. Kevin was on there Tuesday, and I'm going to be there tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. I have some ideas I want to talk about. So, ciao, you guys. <laughs> uh, have a good night. Sweet dreams.